Well, hello everybody. This is Douglas Allen Frazier with Cast to the Other Side. And I'm going to continue. This is, this is where I believe that uh, for right now, this is where the Lord would have me share with you and asking you to think about casting over to the other side. If you are not where you want to be, if you are not doing what you want to do, if you're not receiving the blessings, if you are not comfortable where you're at, I'm going to ask you to cast to the other side. Now, I would like you to consider this as being very important. You and I are not accidents. God does not make accidents. When you read the Word of God in Genesis, in one chapter 1 and verse 31, it talks about all the different things that God had done, and then he says this then God saw everything he had made and indeed it was very good so the evening and the morning were the sixth day now the seventh day was the day that God rested it's called the Sabbath but I want you to think about this a number of years ago I was teaching in India and a group of Christian young people came up to me and they were in college at that time and they said Pastor Doug Pastor Doug will you share what you believe and what we believe to be the truth about God with some of our university friends some are Hindus some are Muslims and some are Christians. I said, absolutely. I said, this would be good. And this was the question that I posed to all of them. And I'm going to pose it to you. First of all, do you believe there is a God? You have to answer that question. And then... The second question is this. Who do you believe made you? There's a big, big spread in thoughts of how humans are created, where they came from. But we have evolutionary thoughts. We have the Big Bang Theory thoughts. We have all sorts of thoughts that go beyond, in man's attempt, to go beyond simply that God created man. It says in Genesis 1.27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. There are no other sexual entities, regardless of all this stuff where now some people said there's like 200 different sexual opportunities, I guess you want to call it, of whatever they want to identify with. God says, I made a male and I made a male, a female, excuse me. I made a male and female and they were created in my image. So that includes our spirit being because God is spirit. So we are spirit. We have a body. We have a soul. And within that soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. That's who we are. That's who we are. We are not an accident. In Isaiah 44, 2, you can read this. I, meaning God, 
am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. That's each of us. That's each of us. Now look at this verse. In Psalm 138, 8, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. If God knew us before we were born, he then gave us a purpose. Psalm 139, 15 says, and this is talking about God, you know me inside and out. You knew and know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. And think about it. You read the creation of Adam, and Adam, God took clay from the earth. And he fa fashioned man. When he created Eve, he took a bone, a rib bone, from Adam's side. And with that, he created woman. So God has a plan of of what it is that he has created and how he was going to create it. Now, why did he create the woman from the bone of a man? It says here in Genesis 2, And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. There's another Hebrew meaning of that word made. It means he built. Sometimes it can be fashioned into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And then Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You see, that is God's plan to bring a man and a woman together. There's a purpose that God for, has for his creation. Now think about this. Now this is where it gets very interesting. And I shared this with that group of young people in India. In Acts 17, 26, it says this. From one man, God made every nation of men. That means all men, all nations came from Adam and Eve, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. So God established his plan of establishing not only man and woman, but the nations, the different ethnicities. We are all one. There is a term that has come out. It's called BIPOC, I believe. And it has to do with kind of a woke thing of being black, indigenous, people of color, etc. Well, if we just take this one verse, let me tell you what I believe BIPOC truly is because God established it. Biblically inspired people of Christ. If you look around the world, if you look at every color, if you look at all the indigenous people, 
if they know Jesus Christ, we are all the same. We're all the same. We're all the same. We're all the same in Christ. I know black Christians. I know indigenous Christians in several nations of indigenous Christians I know, some here in America, some in India, some in Nepal, some in Japan. And we all follow after Christ as our Lord and Savior. So we are brothers and sisters in Christ. So trying to make up some sort of a woke deal. Well, you got to look at somebody that's black because they're black or indigenous and give them special special care. That's a government thing. It goes way beyond what God had established. It's not within God's purview. Now, if that offends you, I'm sorry, but the facts are right there. In Acts 17, 26 again, from one man, God made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. I'm going to close with this because this is the bottom line when it comes to knowing God to knowing what your purpose is, to knowing where it is that you need to spend your time so you can grow in your relationship with God. This is from James 1.8. God decided to give us life through the word of truth so we might be the most important of all the things he made. Look at yourself in the mirror and simply say this. I am the most important thing of all the things that God has made. And if you believe that and you can proclaim that and know that Jesus Christ is your Savior because you have placed your belief, you've placed your faith in Him as being a part of God's overall plan to determine your personal relationship and your eternal relationship with God Almighty. I'll close with this. Lord, for each person that is listening to this today, may you give them a revelation, a fresh revelation, a fresh understanding of who they are, how important they are to you. Let them cast to the other side of their thinking and move into the blessings that you have waiting for them. And may they pull in those blessings as a great harvest for them because that is what you have provided. I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. This is Douglas Allen Frazier with Cast to the Other Side, and we will see you again tomorrow. <laughs>